everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. In Time of Legends, Joan of Arc this week, we'd like to show you the updated Legendary Battles scenario book. You can find the link to the English and the French files in the description below as well as in the Kickstarter update. As always, feel free to drop any comments and feedback on the file, and we will implement them to the best of our ability. And so far, thank you so much for the feedback and comments on the books that we've shown you last week. We're currently compiling them. We really want to make the best game possible for you, and we hope that the wait will be worth it. Moving on to Solomon Kane, today we start presenting you the America the New World expansion. In this expansion, our Puritan starts his adventure in the lost colony of Roanoke. When he reaches the colony, everybody is mysteriously missing. There are no bodies. All he can find is evidence that whoever was in the colony was forced to leave in a hurry. As he examines closely, Solomon finds some suspicious trails and strange marks that he follows, which lead him into the woods. What will happen there? What are these strange marks? Depending on how well our Puritan can trace the trail and the marks, he will find himself in a different part of the woods and a different story will unfold. Will his survival skills help him or betray him? More to come next week. For Super Fantasy Brawl, we have some images from the factory. This time, they shared with us how they will be packing the game. So here you go. These are the final images with the colored game trays. In the images, you can see how everything fits in the game trays. Minis, cards, colored rings, and plastic tokens, everything. You can also see how the final box is going to be packed. On top of the game trays, you can see some papers. This will be where the punch boards will be. And on top of those, you'll, you'll be able to see the rule book. Now in the next images, you can see the neoprene mat set. The neoprene mats will be folded and put in the box. Now, we know that some of you would prefer the mats in a tube. However, the tube size is very big and would force us to have to uh, have a very big box, which we can pack everything in. And of course, that wouldn't make any sense for the volume of the game overall. With regards to the printing process, we have been through the preparatory steps. We've sent the files, they were reviewed by the factory, and they sent us the digital proofs, which we have approved, and you have seen the layout of the box and packing as well. Now, we're in the final stage of the process, which is reviewing the print proof files that the factory sent us. We have finished reviewing them and sent our notes to the factory. If there are no issues with the files from their side, mass printing will begin within the week. Now, the factory has informed us that the printing process will take six to eight weeks since they are still not operating in full capacity. So please note that this time frame includes a buffer time from the factory uh, in case any problems arise. So it is also possible that it takes less than six to eight weeks. In any case, we will keep you posted. For Enchanter's East Quest, today we are happy to share with you the rule book. And as always, you can find the files in both languages, both in the description below, as well as in the Kickstarter updates. The files are both open for comments, so you are welcome to leave your remarks. Uh, we'll be back again in two weeks as we are now working on other aspects of the translation and proofing of the game. As the Steam Watchers team played more and more of the game now that lockdown restrictions are lifted in France, they tweaked a few things on the core rules. The thing that kept coming up was the risk of people abusing attacking the same area, trying to whittle away at enemy resources, and not losing enough or losing too much with the same troops attacking twice. They toyed around with the ideas of demoralizing the losers along with losing a unit, but it was tedious. For example, we had to disseminate the demoralized state, and we never felt it was streamlined. In the end, they gave a fourth defense order, more recruitment, more static defense, and settled for a morale cube, plus two strength when defending in an area where combat has been won this turn, with two losses being suffered by the loser. 
they also added the death and exile area. All components that can never come back during the game, destroyed structures, units lost in incubation and so forth, go there. Also, having a pair of units there gives you minus one geothermal point at the end of the game. There are also some tweaks on the map, either to make the level design clearer or fairer, like helping the southern deployment, which was basically struggling in an area that was a bit barren and bordering no less than three seas, or just to make things more interesting. Now, the Archon is exactly at the middle of the Conclave track, the worst initiative. Yes, but it's so powerful to be there. Trust me, <laughs> it never gets old when you say no units can support this turn or when you order a C to be blockaded. More on the Spark of Hope expansion next week. And finally, to Hell the Last Saga. This week, our Skalds went to work with the writing team. Starting from the canvas imagined by the development team, these writers will have to translate developer language into common language. Your remarks during the campaign highlighted some wishes concerning the narration style, which will be taken into account in our specifications. As you know, the whole saga consists of 13 chapters that we decided to divide into four main acts to accentuate the dramatic tension and mark out the main adventure milestones. This allows us to divide writing into four distinct teams, which allow us to keep consistency for each one of them, since each act will have its own theme and atmosphere. Many of you congratulated us on the rulebook, and the most dedicated readers brought up a few questions and minor typos that our team will address and integrate to update the booklet. We will regularly update the rulebooks, and we will let you know when they are online. They will replace the old versions at the same location as indicated on the main Kickstarter page. The German and Italian versions are in the pipeline at this very moment. Finally, we're also working on a website dedicated to Hell the Last Saga, which will include localized information in the following languages, Spanish, Italian, and German, but will also offer you, offer you goodies to help with the wait. Well, that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.